All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about data links. We're going to talk about diagnosing um, communication problems between computers. I know it's kind of advanced, but I see some need to talk about it because I see a lot of people getting really caught up in how to diagnose CAN networks and how to diagnose communication issues. And I was too, but now I realize that that's very minimal part of the whole entire job of auto, uh, automotive electrician. So I, I don't profess to know everything about cars, but diesel, that's where I have mastery, right? So as it applies to diesel trucks and light duty diesel, I understand how they run their electrical to achieve the tasks that they set forward to achieve, the architecture of circuitry. So when I look at, and many of you know this, but when I look at a data link, obviously I have um, a jumper cable here that is uh, going to my ECM. We'll take a look here just real quick. Let me see if I get that in the picture. And we'll see here that on this plug, there's a yellow and green wire. These are my data link wires. So I've heard a lot of people say things like, you need um, a scope to check out a data link, but that's not, that's not the case. Th there may be some things that people have worked out that they've found some success with, but I'll tell you by the book, and I've read the books, and I know that also by practical application, this is the best foolproof way to do data links. So when you have a data link, you'll have a two pin plug and they will be a twisted set of wires to keep the static from other wires and other fields from other wires intruding on the, on the messaging that's happening, right? And it's, we're talking about a baud rate of speed and we're talking about binary digit bits. So we're talking about code. That code is not something that you're going to be able to look at with a scope and make much sense of as far as the form that it's coming out as. That might tell you it's communicating. If you're looking maybe for a loss of calm to that module, maybe that's fine, but there's no real need for it because you could do the same thing with a multimeter, right? Just go from end to end, we're ohming out wires, and if the ohming out proves to be good, then I can always, the, inside of all these trucks, there's a little plug, and that plug will have two pins, uh, two pin plugs, for that data link and those the data link will go to one ecu and then another so each one will have its own message identifier its way of saying hey this is the engine speaking i'm sending the message 128 and then whatever the information is that follows so when i'm looking at with a computer the easy way to diagnose backbones and then we'll get into the physical way is with a laptop you just do a roll call so you ask to see all the ecus that are reporting to the engine at, the, at that time and if you don't have one reporting say abs module then you log out, you go into the ABS module on its own with your ABS module software. JPro and these kinds of things that are more generic, they are not as specific and you cannot get the specific faults and even the descriptions about them will be different. So I use all proprietary software, CatCom is Detroit and so on and so forth. But I know that when I'm using this protocol adapter, all right, that each each of the Nexic products have always been used as an option for a protocol adapter when you're parameterizing that inside of your computer. So when I'm getting down to options for what I want to use to communicate as a protocol adapter, I need to put in 1939 or whatever I'm, you know, whatever I'm trying to access, but I need to use that, that as my configuration that I'm using Nexic or one guy was talking about inline six and maybe getting seven. Don't, don't keep buying the, the specific ones like the Dearborn and all the others. I like this one because it talks to all of them and you can program, you can do everything you need to do with it. Because what's more important is the software you're using than the protocol adapter. Provided it's an option that the software was built to use, it will work just fine to do all of the capacities of that software. So now uh, when we have a data link issue and we wanna check the backbone, which is to say, I wanna see what the, the, the continuity of my entirety of my whole, all my data links, including going into the computer and reading off of whatever it reads. So you'll have about 60 ohms of resistance. That's battery off, right? Uh, and I always pull negatives when I do resistance checks on anything because you can have static in lines that, that will read incorrectly. So when you do your resistance checks, do them that way. That way you're not energizing circuits and there's not millivoltage being dri uh, drawn from some of these control units, the ECUs. So I'm going to, uh, so I was telling you earlier, you have a backbone, you have the two pin plugs. So if I wanted to check that, it would be easy. I would just take the two plug pin out and I would pin it out um, with my multimeter and check the applied voltage on the other end, right? So I would do source would be, I, I'm, I'm applying 12 volts to this wire. I want to make sure that it's out of, um, out of play of the data link because I don't want to be putting 12 volts in the data link, right? I want to just test that wire. And then I want to get something like a small lamp 
and put it on there and then I want to apply a load and I want to check the wiring. If you are hoping to find a waveform or something that is informing you about the loss of calm with a module, that might work. I mean, I, I can tell you it's not, um, it's not necessary to be able to run a, a scope on engines, diesel engines. Um, maybe an oscilloscope, if you really wanted to get into it, to be able to operate some of the sensors. But even then, you still have to have all the right inputs and conditions to be able to generate the same signals. So you do resistance checks on speed sensors. And remember, we're not science, uh, we are scientific in the way that we approach things. So I don't want to just start grabbing harnesses, hoping I find the problem. That's never what I do. And you're never going to do that by monitoring data on a computer. You're never going to find any, any kind of shit unless you're entered into a wiggle test. Some people have wiggle tests or dyno, not dyno modes, but there's, there's other e uh, software that has the ability to enter the computer into a test that when you shake the wires, the computer's reading the feedback and it says, there's no input from the sensor, the input's from the wire. And because it's not offered in the engine, it's a key on test where it does a wiggle or it does a wiggle test where it energizes all the circuits. And then as you touch it, you can see where something is intermittently connecting. So um, there is not one of those for the data link, but the data link, you know, has gen what we need to do is remember that there are drawings that are called installation drawings. So this means that I can go right up to the backbone and I can pull it. And I know that on that top left connector, it goes right to the engine module, right to these two pins. So I take the ECM and I take the ECM loose and I back probe and I check for continuity. And then if I have to, and I, I say I'm suspect that I don't have good continuity, then I'll go back in there and I'll shake it down. And I say suspect because when you have, um, changes in your meter, it can mean a lot of things, right? So we want to make sure that you're double checking yourself and not just, oh, I'm sure I found it. Never get in that kind of a habit of saying, oh, I'm sure I'm, I'm a dog on the, uh, on the trail. You're not, you, you just have a, an approach. And in the end, you'll win every time. Just don't stop the approach and don't worry about the externals of everyone watching you or trying to see if you know what you're doing. Go through the approach the same way every single time systematically and you'll always come up with a problem. So if I have communication faults in like Insight, they're listed in a whole different page in the, in the Insight for communication, multiplexing issues. And you can look at the occurrences of loss of calm and these types of things. Some of these things are a mere update in the software to get rid of fault codes that keep happening for miscommunications, data erratic, intermittent or incorrect, erroneous messages, all right? So all these things that come across the data line, if it's not, if it doesn't come with all the information that was sent with, then you'll have non-com issues. Sometimes that's written in the software improvements though. When you upgrade the software, it now understands that message better. So don't chase your ass on stuff like that. So data link calm is not uh, super important as far as talking, data link, being able to understand how to communicate with them and then troubleshoot the ECUs and then troubleshoot wires just like you would troubleshoot any other wires. But don't add so much stress on yourself thinking, I'll never get this whole can thing or I'll never have, know how to use a lab scope or, you know, you need a bore scope. That's something you do need to be able to look inside of engines. But, um, and it's sometimes beneficial for looking at harnesses in places you can't see. That's the only scope I know of. And I've been doing this for a long time. So I'm not saying I know every single thing out of the sun, but I can tell you the process, the most efficient process to figuring out problems, especially with communication errors, because if it is a wire and I changed or moved that wire, it's going to be very difficult unless I apply power to that wire and do an applied voltage test, looking for source and the drop by the time it gets to the component, because I'm only allowed half a volt. And anything more than that could easily mean that the message is being misconstrued. Thank you and have a nice night, guys.